What's happening, folks? Geologist Philip Prince uh, looking at the Santorini area again. I want to talk in this video particularly about the ongoing earthquake swarm. Uh, as time passes, it looks more and more like this event is specifically a seismic, sort of an earthquake-related one. Uh, and I want to give you a sense of what the earthquakes have to do with the overall tectonic setting in this area and how the Earth's crust is actually moving. Uh, most of the earthquakes right now are concentrated... I guess generally in an area like that, if you had to had to throw an outline around it there, you've got the little island of Anidros there in the middle of that outline. And it's interesting to look at the area with Google Earth like this because you'll notice there's quite a few of these dark lines running across the seafloor. And if you were to drag your pointer across Google Earth here, uh, you would see that those lines are, are sort of boundaries between shallower and deeper water. Uh, those are actually the, the seafloor expression of some of the bigger faults that cut through this area. Last video, I talked about sort of the general setup of the overall geology of this region and spent some time talking about how the Earth's crust here uh, is being stretched apart. And the faults that I've outlined in yellow there uh, are sort of the result of that stretching stress uh, and what's happened when the Earth's crust has broken and slipped bit by bit over time due to that stress. Now, that's over big geologic time. Uh, an individual earthquake is just a tiny, tiny, tiny little part uh, of a much larger scale evolution. But it's really fascinating to... Uh, to be able to see the Earth's structure in a place like this, but it also demands attention because anytime you have earthquakes like this underneath the sea, they have the potential to disturb the seabed uh, and actually have even more consequences that go just beyond the shaking. So what what's under here? What, what are these faults? What do they represent? Uh, and what's going on with all of these continual earthquakes that we keep hearing about. I'm going to try to sketch this one out like we did last time. Uh, this is going to be a, a much more focused sort of small scale sketch. I'm going to draw out, it's going to be just sort of my starting section of the Earth's crust here. And we're going to stretch that out and make it longer. All right. So this is that whole idea of stretching the Earth's crust here due to the tectonic stress in the region. And if we pull on a section of rock like that, uh, the stress is ultimately going to cause it to break. And the breakage is going to occur along faults, which I'm drawing in here. And you're going to end up, again, over long geologic time, sort of the, the integrated, if you want to call that, kind of totaled up results of a tremendously long period of small movements end up with something kind of like this, okay? I'm going to have to use the eraser here and clear out our old outlines so we can take a look at our newly broken section of Earth's crust that's going to look quite a bit different from that nice orderly rectangle that we started out with there, okay? So always make it harder on yourself when you get a bunch of small lines like that. That's looking pretty good. So we started off with, uh, with that nice clean rectangle, and now after stretching it apart there, have a very much broken section of the Earth's crust. Uh, and what's particularly notable is that blocks of it have kind of, they, they've moved downward, uh, and that's something that goes along with the stretching kind of stress, okay? So what's that going to do? Well, first and foremost, it's going to create what we would call basins here that can collect sediment over geologic time. So we'll kind of draw those in very roughly here. Okay. This is also going to create kind of shallower and, and deeper parts in the ocean, which is something that we can see on Google Earth. So I'll try to draw myself in a sea level here as flat as possible. We'll take that out into the distance and we're even going to put an island sticking up out of the water back there to uh, to expand the discussion a little bit. If I turn this into a block diagram, I'll have everything drop off really steeply off the front of that island. All right, looking good. So if we start to color this in, it can actually end up with a better framework. We're getting the basic idea of how these 
faults control the structure of the crust and ultimately with continued stretching stress how they can can keep producing earthquakes right so got the gray representing our broken continental crust there going to fill in our basins that have a little bit of sediment in them there with this brown color i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get that one got it okay so we'll keep filling in our water here final touch need to have our island representing some dry land that sticks up out of the ocean back here. And we're going to give that kind of a straw color there uh, to represent the drier climate that you see in this part of the world. And our island's got a really big steep side on it right there. And it's got rough topography kind of, uh, kind of all over there. Okay, looking pretty good here. Uh, I'm going to clean up my sea level there just a little bit. Of course, sea level should be uh, should be quite level. Doing my best here in good old paint. So this is a this is a, a pretty good overall framework here, and this area continues to be stretched in the way that has over time caused the crust to break apart, like we see. And with that continued stretching, occasionally these faults have a little bit of slip on them, and that'll create an earthquake. And then you might have a little bit of slip on this one over here because the entire region is experiencing that stress. And movement in one place can change the stress field in another and induce movement there. Now, in this particular case, it seems like the stress in conjunction with some other variable is what's actually causing uh, so many earthquakes. And that may result from fluid migration. There's water with a lot of mineral material dissolved in it deep in the earth it exists there at very high temperature and pressure and it can move around and when it uses these broken fault planes to move around it can allow them to slip a little bit more easily uh, and end up producing repeated earthquakes in the same area like we're seeing but fundamentally this broken crust is kind of the name of the game here and if we add in a little bit of seafloor detail as I'm doing here with these dark lines to show where there's sort of like almost steeper drop-offs, if you will, or changes in depth underneath the surface. Start to get a picture here that's going to look at least a little bit like what we're able to see uh, in Google Earth. We're going to adjust this view just a little bit here, so it's going uh, to match our drawing a little bit better, right? So if we were set up something like this, Looking out across the surface of the Aegean here, this is the island of Amorgos and Idros there. The dark lines representing those kind of steep areas, sort of drop-offs that are associated with the long-term effects of those faults. That's what we're trying to uh what we're trying to capture here in the diagram, right? So when you see those steep areas underwater, you're you're literally looking at the fault structure as it's controlling the shape of the seabed, right? And in areas where you have several faults here, you could have a little bit of slip there, and then some slip there, a little bit of slip here. And it's possible to have quite a concentration of earthquake activity in the same area. Uh, and it would look almost like on the map that those earthquake events were, were sort of lining up, uh, if you will. And indeed, you can almost get a almost get a sense of that if you look at where they've occurred with this event where it's it's as if they're sort of you know aligned kind of like this in a way that's basically parallel to these fault lines that you see uh on the bottom of the ocean right so yes that is a that is a relationship and it's all connected so that's that's what's under the ground that's what the faults actually are they are breaks in the earth's crust that result from the crust kind of changing its shape as a result of being stretched by the tectonic movement over time. Why are folks so interested in the, the long-term effects of, of these continued earthquakes? There is interest in the potential of there being one pretty big earthquake event that would release a very large amount of energy and actually would involve enough fault movement to slightly shift downwards the bottom of the ocean. Okay, so that's something that we actually can't sketch in here because the movement that that would produce 
we're talking about a few meters of movement. You would measure it in 10 or 15 or 20 feet or something like that. Seems tiny. It is tiny in terms of the, the scale of the Earth's crust. Everything we're looking at in this drawing is, is miles and miles of rock going down into the Earth. But that tiny little movement, if it perturbs that deep ocean water column, uh, that's actually what ends up producing tsunami waves. So what would this look like? Well, if we could sketch it, with just enough change here so that we'd be able to see it, we're going to have to go in here, shift our ocean bottom down ever so slightly. And everything here in this uh, in this right-hand side of the fault is going to move downward just a little bit. So the shift is very, very small, but it's more than enough to accomplish what we're trying to show. That's going to have the effect of kind of perturbing the water column above that, something like this. And those waves are going to fan out. And that's sort of the idea of, of a tsunami resulting from a big undersea earthquake when there is, in this case, downward movement of the seabed. You can also get it from upward movement in places where where compressional sort of squeezing together uh, tectonics are dominant, right? That has happened in this region. Uh, there have been magnitude, uh, well over magnitude seven, like 7.7 .7 events or something like that in, in this part of the Aegean. It's a big one in 1956. Um, given the way our sketch looks, and I'm kind of down in here somewhere, um, associated with either one of those fault structures there uh, as they're seen on the seabed. I don't know which released a huge amount of energy and it did have a, a very damaging tsunami associated with it. There was some suggestion that with that big earthquake, there was actually uh, like an underwater landslide. Um, so maybe you had, you know, something happened like that where with the shaking on one of those steep slopes, some material came down that has also the same effect of kind of perturbing the, the the deep water column in the Aegean there. And that can also produce a tsunami. There was a recent publication that said it was from the earthquake uh, and the actual movement associated with it. One way or another, it's something to keep in mind uh, as this place, of course, does have a history of big earthquake events, right? And you have to look no further than literally the appearance of the ocean bottom here with all of these kind of steep drop-offs I've talked about and deeper areas, kind of like you see here, shallower water. All of those are telling you that this is a part of the Earth's surface that is very much alive. The movements that are happening now are tiny, 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 but they're just one component of this much bigger and, and longer term story, right? So we'll uh, we'll flatten our, flatten our ocean surface back out here. Uh, if you look at a map of the earthquake swarm as it's been occurring and continues to occur, you'll see that it's sort of concentrated along what I've got is kind of a kind of a higher part of the crust there where the water is uh, is a little bit shallower, right? So that's the main idea. And and what's on a geologist's mind in a place like this, they know that the stress is from stretching. And they're going to be visualizing faults like this that allow big blocks of the crust to slide downward bit by bit. And the mental picture is going to be of the slip happening sort of as I'm showing the little dots here, each one of those representing a slip event, uh, literally miles, miles deep. So this isn't right on the ocean bottom. It's well down within uh, the rocks of Earth's crust, right? So keeping that, keeping that sketch in mind, you're you're sort of looking at you know, what is uh, again very much a a broken and structurally complex part of the Earth's crust. It's one that has ongoing tectonic stress and ongoing movement. Uh, talked about this in the other video, but the the actual movement of of the plates here, at least underneath the Aegean, would be something like this, where this is all being pulled down to the south by the African plate sinking down underneath it. The Anatolian plate is, is kind of moving over like this. And 
ultimately the 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 stretching that is affecting the earthquake swarm area is part of that that movement that kind of tearing away uh, of the the Aegean plate there from sort of the rest of the the Eurasian continental mass to the north remarkably complex tectonics in this area just about every country that you can see here uh, has dealt with some sort of seismic issue uh, at some point in its history that's just kind of because where you where you are here um, on the uh, on the earth's surface right but as the the earthquakes continue and they continue to receive attention you'll hear more and more uh, about the fault lines here that people know about and that's that's what the the main idea here is the earth's crust is actually actually broken and it's it's moving every earthquake is just a tiny 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 little bit of movement All right what's going to come of this nobody knows uh it's it's sort of a wait and see type of thing but this has been uh, a pretty notable earthquake swarm and it doesn't appear to have really diminished in its in its strength so far which is uh which is also an interesting characteristic so hope you uh hope you found this video useful uh you hear a lot about this a lot of times you don't actually see any representation uh, of the overall idea of what is down inside the earth that's actually causing this to happen uh and this is where it's going on right now of course there's countless locations around the planet where you could see something like this happen down the road because Earth is is very much still alive uh, in terms of plate tectonics, how the plates move and shift around, and how they put stress on the rocks to, to ultimately cause them to break and give you earthquake events.